folks. Popular Mechanics has written an article with the audacious title, A Groundbreaking Scientific Discovery Shows That We Can Reverse Death. Is that true? It depends on how you understand death. In the old days, it was relatively easy to determine whether someone was dead. They stopped breathing and their pulse disappeared. That was a useful way of determining death because the breathing, nece breathing is necessary to get oxygen into the blood and a beating heart is necessary to push oxygen-laden blood to the cells of the body. Without that happening, every cell in the body would die. Of course, mistakes could be made. Uh, someone might be breathing really shallowly and they might only have a faint pulse. But if they really stopped breathing and their heart really stopped, they were dead. End of story. Things got more complex in the 20th century. Techniques became available to keep someone breathing and to restart their heart. In the 1950s, ventilators were introduced. These are machines that act like bellows to move air in and out of the lungs. Also in the 1950s, the first external mechanical hearts became available. And by 1960, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, could help keep blood flowing during a cardiac arrest, keep it moving around the body. Adrenaline injections could encourage the heart to resume beating, and defibrillators could hopefully shock it back into a normal heart rhythm. All this raised the question of whether people who met the previous definition of death, no breathing and no heartbeat, should really be considered dead. By the late 1960s, a new criterion was being proposed, absence of brain activity. This could make sense because a function in brain was needed to keep things like breathing and parts going without mechanical aid. So, some reasoned, if the brain was no longer working, if the patient was brain dead, you could forego artificial respiration and heart stimulation and treat the patient as dead. This meant that you could harvest their organs if they were an organ donor, including their precious heart. The first successful heart transplant took place in 1967, so maybe someone else could use the, the organ if the donor was brain dead. There has been a lively debate about whether lack of brain activity should be used to define death, and advocates of brain death as the key criterion have won a lot of converts to their view. At the same time, there have been concerns that doctors have been defining brain death in a loosey-goosey way, such as merely being a persistent vegetative state rather than true and permanent absence of brain function. This would let them take more people off life support, which would let them free up medical resources and harvest organs for more people. Personally, I'm not at all convinced that the brain death criterion is adequately defined or applied today, and so a person who is actually still alive may be killed by the removal of their heart for a transplant. Consequently, I have not agreed to donate my organs on my driver's license. While the brain death debate has been going on, the concept of death has begun to be questioned on a new front, the cellular level. Hypothetically, one could argue that a person's body isn't fully dead unless all of the cells in it have died, and things like brain function, respiration, and heart action are just things needed to keep the cells alive. We thus might be able to help save more people if we could intervene to keep their cells alive long enough to fix whatever is wrong with their brain, lungs, heart, or other organs. Popular Mechanics has discussed a team of researchers who have been working on how to support the cells of the body when critical organs are not functioning. They call this system Organ X, and preliminary trials on pigs have been successful, though human trials are still years off. Other advances are also being made. It turns out that if a person's body and brain are cooled down in the right way, they can be brought back to normal functioning as much as six hours after cardiac arrest has occurred. See, for example, Samparnia's book, Erase and Death, the science that is rewriting the boundaries between life and death. We also now have implantable artificial hearts, and though they aren't yet as convenient and reliable as the one the biological version of Captain Picard had on Star Trek, we're approaching the point where not having a functioning heart may no longer be a useful criterion for irreversible death. 
What all of these advances have done is make death, which used to look like a simple either-or state, to look more like a process, and a process that in many cases can be reversed. As medicine continues to advance, we may expect it to become more and more reversible, which will make it more challenging to define precisely when final death occurs. If you like this content, be sure to do all the YouTube stuff to tell YouTube to show this video to other people. Like it, comment on it, and share it with others. And I am trying to grow my channel, so I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. And be sure and hit the bell notification so that you always get notified whenever I have a new video. These days, I have multiple videos coming out every week. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you.